Liberty Natty State Studio, the sports media palace of Mid-America, the Wolf of Center Street. Here's your host, John Neighbor. And welcome into the John Neighbor Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate each and every one of you listening in and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. I am your host, John Neighbors, and appreciate each and every one of you for listening and making us a part of your afternoon this afternoon as we got a fun-filled show for you today here on this Tuesday. As I know that we got Razorback Baseball happening tonight against Texas Tech. The game's going to be at 7 o'clock on ESPN2, so some national TV action. Should be interesting to see how the team bounces back after their first series loss against the Alabama Crimson Tide in Alabama this year. So we'll do a little previewing of that. We'll give you some updates on some of the football side of things too. The transfer portal continues to be the transfer portal. I mean, that's that's how it needs to be put. So we'll uh, talk about that and get into some more basketball news. Bobby Regan, Barstool Sports. I'm sure a lot of you know who Bobby Regan is. He's come on my show, and he's a good friend of mine. He's a U.K. guy. He's a Kentucky grad. He's a Kentucky fan. He's all about Kentucky basketball. And he's written some interesting articles and given his interesting thoughts about Cal Perry and Arkansas and everything. So uh, we'll, we'll catch up with him and see exactly how he feels about some of the other things going on in the sports landscape. But I don't know. i got to put my Jets helmet over here, though. Can't leave that out. So we'll talk to him, though. I'm sure he'll be completely unbiased and nobody will have a problem with him whatsoever. But either way, um, if you want to end the conversation, too, folks, uh, we just do the phone line thing, and it's been pretty interesting, to say the least, when people are calling in and giving their thoughts. Some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't, but that's okay. That's what makes it fun. But if you want in on the conversation, you can call in at 936-246-2889 or 936-24-NATTY, 24-NATTY. I don't know. I need to think of something a little bit more succinct than that, but still, you can call it that number too. You can get into the chat. We'll try to get to all of those too, and uh, we'll keep it moving here on the show. But I wanted to open up and continuing to talk about Razorback basketball and John Calipari because that is where everyone's attention is right now. And they may have a little bit over here baseball and a little bit over here on football, but right now it is about the Razorback basketball team and the program and John Calipari. And so if you haven't had a chance to follow along and listen to the pot at the palace, they've done a great job of keeping you up to date on that with Curtis and Scotty. Also, uh, Blake Lawson, Lawson Blake. I always want to say it because I knew how a friend that was named Blake Lawson, Lawson Blake. He is going to be making an appearance on pot at the palace. So really look forward to hearing uh, from that. But either way, uh, it's been pretty crazy right now. Big Z committed yesterday. And that got people really excited, Seven foot two, a guy who was on Kentucky's team last season, and now he's on Arkansas because he feels like Arkansas is better suited to win a national championship and get him into the NBA with Calipari than it is with Mark Pope over at Kentucky. Not that I'm throwing shade. But the expectation is really what I wanted to address today because I talked about that with Bobby Regan. I've talked about that with some Kentucky media, and I've talked about it with a lot of you Razorback fans. We've discussed it. What is an expectation, reasonable, a reasonable expectation for Razorbacks? So I think it's always going to be a pretty fascinating thing to hear from different fans' perspectives on what they think, what they think it should be, what they think it it is. And I'm going to give you my thought on this for the expectation because it's a five-year deal in the contract. I'm going to take away the five years. I'm going to look at it three. And the reason I'm saying three years is because just how crazy and quickly everything's changed on the landscape of college sports and college athletics. That's a reasonable number to me to look ahead and say, all right, given the circumstances of where it stands right now, what will be the ultimate expectation? And I know all about John Calipari. 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 I know all about him. We've seen what he's been able to do. He's won everywhere he's been. He went to a Final Four at UMass. He went to a Final Four at Memphis. And he went to a Final Four at Kentucky. Multiple Final Fours. Six Final Fours in his day. Granted, that has been more in history than it has been here recently. But still, that is what it's been about. That's what everyone's been looking at from 
the perspective of Arkansas connected with him. And here's my expectation for the next three years for Razorback basketball. We'll start with the bare minimum. Or we'll start with, we'll build it. We'll build it. How about that? We'll build it. The bare minimum needs to be that you make the NCAA tournament every single year. That has to be, ha be happening. That would have to happen no matter who the coach is at Arkansas. Arkansas is a program that should make the NCAA tournament each and every season. No questions about it. No, 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 no ifs, ands, buts about it. It needs to happen. So there's number one. Number two, I believe that Arkansas in the next three years needs to win the SEC regular season and or the SEC tournament. Now, that doesn't matter as far as what the success is based on. Like, I, I always got an argument about this with Alabama fans, with Auburn fans, with everybody in general on this. It's not about what you do in the regular season or even in the meaningless conference tournament. It's about what you do in the NCAA tournament. I'm still holding to that. But if we're talking about reasonable expectations, having a great regular season always equates to having a better seed. And if Arkansas is able to win the SEC regular season, that equates to a better seed, which theoretically puts them in a better position to advance further into the NCAA tournament, in theory. Same thing goes with the SEC tournament. I think in the next three years, Arkansas needs, has to do that. It has to happen. So that, to me, is reasonable as far as the bare minimum as far as the situation it's in right now and moving forward with knowing the talent or not knowing the talent, not even knowing the roster right now, I think that's reasonable. Now, on top of that, I'm going to take it one step further because I believe, I believe that Arkansas is a program that is set up for the highest level of success just like any other program. There's a reason why Bud Walton seats 20,000 people. It's not because nobody else has anything better to do like everyone tries to make it out to be. But it's an arena and it's a fan base that has a very powerful and very energized fan base for basketball. You have in-state talent out the wazoo each and every year. You have a practice facility that's state-of-the-art. And you know you're going to have a coaching staff and you know you're going to have NIL. You're going to have everything. What is the thing that is missing from Arkansas that keeps someone from winning a national championship in the here and now, right now, in, base, in, in basketball? What is, what is keeping them from doing that? And to me, I don't see anything. There's nothing. They got the coach that's capable of it. They have the facilities. They have the, the money. They have everything. So what's to keep them from winning a national championship? Nothing. But it's easier said than done. So that's why... I'm not going to be looking at it as national championship or bust. Because I think that's an unfair assessment for any coach, especially a new coach within the first three seasons of them being at one particular school. That's a lot to ask. But I am saying that at a place like Arkansas with a coach like Cal Perry, it is an absolutely reasonable expectation to think that this team's going to make a Final Four. I think in the next three seasons, I shouldn't say I think, I expect, I expect in the next three seasons for John Calipari and Arkansas to make a Final Four. Because they have everything that they need. Winning in the NCAA tournament is an extremely difficult thing. I know that it's difficult in baseball to advance to the World Series. I know it's difficult in football but it's so different because think about it in this perspective. In the NBA, you have playoffs with series, seven-game series to decide who's the best. And same thing goes even with college baseball. In college baseball, you have a few games at minimum, a series. I know that you're in your Super Regional, you got a three-game series. And then if you make it to the World Series Finals, you got a three-game series. Like, you have opportunities to where if you don't play your best game, 
you more often than not have a chance to redeem yourself in the next time. But in college basketball, it is one and done. Win or go home. There's no series. There's no <laughs> mulligans. There's no, okay, loser brackets. No, there's none of that. It is win or go home. And so the second that you end up not having a great game or great season, that's when the problems arise. That's when it becomes a problem. Because then you could have the best team ever assembled. You could have the most talent. You could have won 38 games. But no one's going to care and no one's going to remember if you get bounced out in the first or second round. It's just the facts. So I understand how difficult it is. You get one shot, one opportunity to cease everything you wanted. I'm sorry. I won't do that again. But you do. You get one shot at it. We've seen how many, I mean, how many times have we seen the best teams each and every year get bounced out of the NCAA tournament? UConn is the exception to the rule this season. They're just a machine. But think about even last year, folks, they were a four seed and they won the national championship. Be there, three or four seed. They weren't a one or a two, and they won it all. So if you take all that into perspective, there is zero reason, zero excuse for Arkansas not to go to a final four. I know the talent's going to be there. So do you. I know Cal's gotten there before. So do you. I know what Arkansas is capable of. So do you. So why is that not a reasonable expectation? Why is that not a reasonable thing to believe in? Given the circumstances and given who you have. That's me. That's just me. Now, I asked on my Twitters about this particular topic. And I was just throwing it out there to each and every one of you at John Neighbor's show. What are your expectations for John Calipari and Razorback basketball over the next three seasons? What are your expectations? And I'm just going to read a few of these. And uh, our phone line is down. We'll, we'll come back here in a second. But uh, once we take a break, I'll start to take some of your phone calls. So if you're trying to call in, just be on the heads up. It'll be ready to go once we take a break. But this comes from Blaine. He says, one regular season conference title, one win, uh, a winning road record in the SEC, and an SEC tournament title, two Elite Eights, and a Final Four. You know, just a few standard things for him. And I think that's a great point. That's the expectation for him. Because if you're paying a coach seven to $8 million a year, and you've pledged NIL that is the highest, if not one of the highest budgets of NIL dedicated to the basketball program, there's no excuse. There's no. There's nothing missing. There's uh, another guy that says, uh, no expectations, just want to watch good basketball. When you form expectations around other people's performances, then you're usually disappointed. Okay, I get some of that, but at the same time, as a fan, we have expectations. We go into something saying, hey, we expect this to happen. Now, like this past year in basketball, it didn't go well for Arkansas, but we had expectations, didn't we? And what did we base those expectations on? It wasn't just us here in Arkansas, but it was nationally. You base it on talent. You base it on coaching. You base it on schedule. You base it on everything. And when that comes along, you're going to have an expectation. I know it's easy to say that. It's easy to believe that, ah, well, I don't have any expectations. No, we got expectations. Because if you don't have expectations, it's almost like an, in a cowardly way. It's like, well, you know, I have no expectations, so therefore I'll never be disappointed. That's not what fans do. That's not how they look at it, and that can't be reasonable. Another, uh, I guess, like unbiased brim says, one final four. I think it's fair. Someone's name is named the Broyles Curse. Love this. It says, make the tournament in year one. Go on a run if you can. Year two, Sweet 16. Year three, Elite Eight. As long as we're highly competitive, get good recruits, I won't bitch too much. That's what he says. Okay. What everything is fair. People also say Final Four. Kyle says Final Four. Cliff says Final Four. Mike says the whole thing. Michael, a different Michael, says Final Four. Matthew says Final Four. Landon says Final Four. I think that everyone's kind of on the same page with me on this. Arkansas needs to go to the Final Four with John Calipari as their head coach within the next three years. Now, let me be very clear on this, folks. 
Just because I believe that and I say that does not mean that after year three, if Arkansas has only made it to three straight elite eights, that I am wanting, I'm getting the torches out. We're going, this man needs to be fired. He sucks. Get him out. No. I am looking at it as, are you a team that is competing for that championship, for that Final Four? NCAA tournament is a crapshoot. We all know. Sometimes people don't understand how difficult it is to make to a Final Four. Like Tennessee, that basketball program, they've never been to a Final Four. Alabama just made the Final Four for the first time ever this past season. Auburn, same thing in 2019, ever for the first time. So many programs just in this conference haven't even made a Final Four in their history. It's extremely difficult to get to that point. But there's a difference between falling backwards, getting a little bit lucky, and having it all work out for you, <clears throat> Alabama, and actually being a team that's worthy of taking care of business against the teams that are inferior to you, winning those games, and in the moments that matter the most, stepping up in a major way. That is what I want from Arkansas. That is what I want from John Calipari, to be a program that if you make the Final Four, it's not a shock. It's not like, whoa, this team, man, they got, they, they got it going on at the right time. You know, they're really crappy. I mean, I'll take a Final Four either way. But my point is, is like, I want to be that team that people are picking to go to the Final Four because of how good you are. That's what I mean by getting to the Final Four. If they make it to the Elite Eight for three straight seasons, I'm still going to be all right with John Calipari. I'm not going to be like, fire this man. I'm not going to do that. But the second that you stop competing that way, though, the second you miss the NCAA tournament, the second that you get bounced for three straight years in the first round, which I know that's what Kentucky fans are always crowing about for Cal, and I'm like, well, Cal Parry has won more uh, NCAA tournament games over the past five years than their new head coach. Just remember that. But the point is, is that everyone's going to be just looking at it under a microscope and be like, okay, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? What's, what, what, how, how good can this be? And if it's not good, everybody's like, oh, this guy sucks. Folks, just you got to look at it in, in, a, in a big picture. You got to look at it in the grand scheme of things. I have confidence that that's going to happen. I have confidence that Arkansas is going to be there to be in the conversation. But the reason I believe that is because that's my expectation. This ain't just some old crapper wear program. This is Arkansas we're talking about. This is, is it a blue-blooded program? I'm not, I don't know because I feel like that term gets changed as far as what it actually means. But there's nobody that covers, talks about their expertise as college basketball that's worth their salt that doesn't believe that Arkansas is one of the best jobs in the country. Top 10, top 15 jobs. And if you don't believe me, maybe ask John Calipari in the NIL incentive that's been promised. I mean, what dictates a great job in college sports? Set up for success to win at the highest level. And I could be wrong, but I believe Arkansas proved, as if they hadn't already, but they proved that during this coaching carousel where they lost Eric Musselman and they added John Calipari and they added this NIL budget, they proved that they can handle the big boys and they can do everything in their power to put together a national championship basketball team. So you tell me how Arkansas is not one of the top jobs. Do they have as much history as Kansas, Carolina, Duke, Kentucky, all that? No, they don't. But you know who doesn't care about history? Current, potential basketball players. What do they care about? They care about getting to the next level and winning a championship. They don't care about where, like where you were you know, 30 years ago. For all, oh, well, 94, I wasn't even born yet. So that sucks. Yeah, I'm not going there. You haven't won a title in the past 15 seasons. They don't care. They care about right now, here and now, who's going to put them in a position to get to the league and which team is going to be best suited for them to win a national championship. And Arkansas is both of those. 
And once again, if you don't believe me, ask Big Z. Because yesterday in his statement when he was committing to Arkansas, he said that exact thing. So don't worry about it. Totally fine. Totally fine. It's going to be fine. And I can't wait to hear of all your thoughts and opinions. We'll get our phone lines all set up, folks. And we'll also get to some of your phone calls on what your expectation is for Razorback basketball under John Calperry. But first, got to tell you about Superior Contracting and Development here in the state of Arkansas. And they are licensed residential commercial contractors specializing in all aspects of home building and home remodeling. They handle everything from fencing to drainage to additions to remodeling to your existing structure all the way to land development and ground-up construction. Listen, folks, we know that in the we- and when the weather starts getting nicer, you start getting the itch to try to do something different, to have something new. Maybe the kids have finally gotten out of the house and you have all this extra space, but you don't want to buy a house. The rate's as high as they are. You want to knock out some things. You want to make some space for you and your significant other, so don't hesitate. Call the people over at Superior Contracting and Development, and they'll get you taken care of and set you up for all those different renovations that you want to make at 501-453-3053. That's 501-453-3053. You can email them at contracting at superiorark.com. No matter what it is, do it with Superior Contract and Development at 501-453-3053. We will take a break. When we come back, we'll get to more of your phone calls and the John Neighbor Show here live from the United States Sports Studios, so stay with us. We're not done yet either, so don't be satisfied because we're not done. Hey, hey John, uh, Bob Polk, Arkansas, Denver Crickets. I added two part if that's okay. You mentioned Arkansas. Eric, um, why do you always talk about Arkansas? But go ahead. Well, why do you always talk about Kentucky? <laughs> <laughs> you missed it. Okay, you missed it. You missed it. Okay, just tell me you missed it. I'm not going to go through with you. Why not? And that will be the last question I answer with that hat on. <laughs> 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 oh, shoot. That is why Arkansas is fantastic. Yes, sir. You know, I didn't like, you know, I didn't like the game, but I'm glad I was able to walk off the floor again and deep inside and have that funny feeling that, hey, one more time, Horn. Best, guys. Uh, I know it's a tough time for you. Uh, the coach is gone, but you got a new coach now, and you got to listen to what he says. Okay, I know thinking, oh, who is this new guy? Where's the other guy that crashed the motorcycle? We like him better. He was cool or whatever. Forget about all that. Listen to the new coach and get out there and win some games. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. You guys act like it's pick it up a little bit. Okay, get your chin up. Smile! Smile! Okay? Dang, you guys all right? If not, I'm not talking! Big Red, so excited! Big Red! Oh! Oh! Guys, I've got just one thing I want to say to you. Touchdown, Arkansas! I was a teacher today. Hold those boys. Welcome to the SEC. Well, Fayetteville is 1,843 miles away, but the call of the Hawks can be heard all the way to San Francisco. Let's dig my dick in the mashed potato. Go Hawks. Powered by Arkansas for Arkansas. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbors Show is live from the Natty States Sports Studios. Welcome back into the John Neighbor Show here live from Navi State Sports Studios. Appreciate each and every one of you listening in and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. And I uh, want to remind everybody that as we've been talking some Razorback basketball, uh, if you want in on the conversation and you want to get your voice heard and what your expectations are for Razorback basketball for the next three seasons with John Calipari, you can call in at 936-246-2889. And uh, phone lines are up now. So if you're trying to call in, I apologize. But we got them going right now. And we'll make it happen for you, too. Um, let's see. A few people have been uh, chatting. There's, uh, it is funny, like, when we do this live stream. You know, I love the chats. And love to see how people are feeling. But the amount of Kentucky fans that keep jumping into them is pretty fascinating, pretty funny. Because um, here's my thing. I know it's not a, a referendum on all Kentucky fans. Because some of them are just fine. I'm friends with some of them, but it is something funny where 
they keep wanting to go after. Like, I, I mean, how many, I mean, let's be honest, how many Razorback fans have been jumping into the chats or into the replies of USC fans because of Eric Musselman? Like, are there people that have been doing that? I haven't seen it. I'm not saying it hasn't happened, but I haven't necessarily seen all of that. But still, it's just funny how people approach it a little bit differently. Approach how they handle a coach leaving them for somebody else and where it's at. Because I keep bringing it up, and I'm going to keep bringing it up. This is a new territory for uh, for a lot of these Kentucky fans. They don't know what it's like to have a coach leave for a better opportunity. They don't know what that's like. So give them a, give them a, give them a break. Give them a break. They're you know, all over the place, and they don't really know how to feel about it. And that's fine. That's fine. Everything will be settled on the court. That's what I'm excited about. Everything's going to be settled on the court here soon. But people are going to be heated in this thing. I think that you got to have it to where it's a it's a home and home this year. Both games are on Saturday. Who knows? Maybe they'll even because the Kentucky game and and Rupp. It'll have to be probably the most anticipated game in Rupp Arena. I guess maybe when Rick Pitino came to was at Louisville and came to Kentucky. But even then, it's like he had the, the in-between with the Celtics. So it wasn't like he just jumped from Kentucky to Louisville because that would have been a whole different can of worms. But I think that people may be a little bit more understanding if that's the case. So, yeah, I'm looking already looking at some of these replies. Jeez. Oh, man. See, Hunter says, uh, Kentucky had to settle for a former player to be their coach. LMAO. Well, that's true. Uh, Jason says, y'all going to love watching the defense gets torched seven straight possessions while coach watches making zero changes waiting for kids to figure it out. I guess that's a Kentucky fan. Okay, well, I, I again, I don't understand. I like if You felt like he ran his course. That's fine. But let me ask you, honestly, Cal going to win a national championship into the Final Fours and everything, like how did he do that then? Like, I get he hasn't done six, hasn't been as successful as he needed to be over the past few years in the tournament, but you're talking about this type of stuff. How did he do it then? Did he just get lucky that those players were really good? Is he just, ah, what are you going to do? Are you going to get lucky? I don't, I don't buy that at all. And Bias Brim says, some Kentucky fans thirsty and not confident. Go do y'all. I don't care what y'all got to tell me. Only focused on form, uh, only focused on y'all's former players. Other than that, I could care less what you what the uh, hashtag BBN does. Yeah, that's another thing. Is every time there's been a player that's jumped in on it, then uh, people have been pretty upset by it. And like Kentucky fans, it is being upset by it and coming in and being mad. But yeah, I think it's going to be fine. Besides, I thought Kentucky fans wouldn't didn't want. Cal Perry there anyways thought they were tired of him thought that they were saying ah we want to move on from this and you were cheering it's amazing how that changes because again you're cheering and you're thinking you're doing great until you're not until suddenly the other team that has them is a threat that's my viewpoint on it if you are worried about Arkansas and Cal Perry and you keep crowing about it. It's one because you have to convince yourself. You're trying to convince yourself that it's going to be a okay because you're not confident in your certain situation. But it's also because you're scared of what he could end up doing at Arkansas. I'd love to win a national championship. No matter who does it, no matter how it's done, I'd love to win a national championship at Arkansas. But I don't think there would be anything funnier or poetic, more incredible than Razorback basketball winning a national championship in Cal Perry's first year. That, to me, would be the creme de la creme, just the chef's kiss for everything. But both programs are going to find out here in a bit. Um, so, yeah, so Big Z, I know that some of you watched yesterday. Uh, he is officially committed to Arkansas. Had a nice little message there. He's 7'2", 234, and Arkansas is just waiting on some other uh, guys to get into the, to the mix. Jaden Quaintance is the five-star true freshman, uh, would be a true freshman, 6'10", 225 pounds, he's a power forward, number eight player in the country. Arkansas is definitely in the mix. He's also uh, considering uh, the G League, but uh, I, th I th just going out on it, I, I think he ends up at Arkansas. I think him and Carter Knox both. 
I think both of those guys end up being Razorbacks. Because you, listen, if if you're if you're somebody who was all in about Cal Perry, and that's why you were going to Kentucky for one of these players, which these players, it kind of makes sense because that's why they decommitted. If they were all in on Cal Perry at Kentucky, why would you not be all in on Cal Perry at Arkansas? Does does Kentucky have some sort of magic fairy dust that they sprinkle over there in Lexington where it's like? You can't get this anywhere else. You're going to be a pro more so because you went to Kentucky. No. <laughs> so I, I just looking at it from all angles and knowing about the NIL stuff, it makes sense that Cal Perry is going to get these guys to Arkansas, and that's that. They're going to start having some, some success there too. But those are the players to really watch. Those are the freshman ones that people are excited about. Um, I know DJ Wagner entered into the portal, a former Kentucky player. Average 10 points a game, two rebounds a game, and three three assists per game. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind him, you know? <laughs> it's like all these players. It's like, who do you want? All of them. I want them all. Give me all the give me all the Kentucky players, add in some of these talented true freshmen, and give me a couple other transfers, and and let's get weird. Let's get weird. I was looking at some of the other players that were uh possibilities. Again, I don't want to ever get hopes up for people. But I was looking at possibilities for uh, guys that could be coming into the mix and doing it. Like uh, like today we saw that Kobe Brea, who is the Dayton grad transfer, has heard from Arkansas and a lot of other schools. But they he entered into the transfer portal last night, and he's a big-time player that Arkansas is going to be a mix, as well as Kansas and UConn, a few other players of note. So uh, that'll that'll be something to keep your eye on. But there's other ones, too, that they're going to be getting after. And the transfer portal is still open, so people are going to be hopping into that. Like, there could be some guys that would be fantastic additions that aren't in the portal just yet. But certainly follow on NattyStateSports.com as Curtis and Scotty have a continuation of an updated tracker on the transfer portal big board they call it the uh, arkansas basketball recruiting big board because recruiting is now everything besides just freshmen so the transfers and all of that but yeah check that out and we'll, we'll keep you up to date on all of that too and uh hopefully hopefully it ends up being roster i still want to know about caliph battle like what what happens with him because we know calipari contacted or at least talked to some of the razorbacks that were currently in the transfer portal but potentially could come back Trevor Bazil has already announced he's going pro so I don't think that's that's one of the possibilities Tremont Mark already announced he's going to Texas so Caleb Battle to me is the one that may have been contacted may have talked with but how cool would that be I think that would be a great story a great I don't want to call it redemption but just a great story where you have a guy who was on the team last year had his ups and downs really struggled in the beginning or in the mid part of the season and figured it out, turned it on. Dude was capable of going for 40 on any night. And it seemed like there was not a problem with him per se and the rest of the team. Like, he wasn't the issue. He seemed to be all about it, and he seemed to have all the potential in the world. And being in the portal, I don't I don't know how much interest there is from Cal. Uh, I think that there's least conversations. But that would be just so cool to see this new roster get formulated. You have – these big time freshmen coming in, you have these big time transfers coming in, and then you have that one player, that one remaining player from last year's team, who arguably was the most important player that you would love to have from last year's team, staying on the roster and getting it done. Like that, that would be tremendous. So I'm rooting for that. But if Cal doesn't want him, then that's okay. Still rooting for that. People keep asking me about Layden Blocker who, true freshman last year, didn't play a whole lot, especially down the stretch, as the Arkansas Connections was a four-star player coming out of high school, and if Cal will bring him in or bring him back. I'm going to be honest, folks. I don't know, but I would be surprised if he did, and that's nothing against Layden Blocker. I'm just looking at all the roster spots that they're trying to fill, all the guys that they're talking to, and I just don't know if Layden Blocker fits into the mold of what they're looking at in that guard position 
They could be getting some of these true freshmen that would play in that role instead. They could be, you know, the portal just has players out the wazoo, so they could be jumping into one of those. But if you're just looking at him in particular, I just don't know if that's the type of player that you're like, okay, first year under Cal, all this NIL, all this money. Well, one of the players we're really going to rely on to be able to help us out is going to be Layden Blocker, who didn't have a whole lot of playing time last season, and we really don't know what uh, what part of his game that he'll be able to add. Again, it's not an insult at all. It's just I don't know if that's the route they go. But I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If Cal wants him, then Cal shall get him, and I'll trust his judgment on it. If he wants Caleb Battle, I'll trust his judgment on it. But if he wants to go and get a bunch of five-star true freshman McDonald's All-Americans and some of them burger boys and get some of the big-time transfers from other schools and bring back a lot of the players from his Kentucky team last year, if he wants to do that too, then so be it. I am all for those types of players and those types of things. So just, again, let it play out. But don't force it to where you're like, oh, I, he's got he's to keep this guy. He's got to keep this guy in, in the rotation. Or he's got to add this player. And if he doesn't, he's missing out. I'm trusting his judgment. And I advise you to do the same thing. I know it's easier said than done, but I'm just we'll, – we'll call it an advisement. But 936-246-2889 is the number to call or to message in. Uh, I know we'll have a part of your Arkansas update here in just a little bit, but – also want to remind all of you fine folks out there that one of our great sponsors here is Alumni Hall in Fayetteville. You Razorback fans, you want to be able to be wearing the best apparel possible and rocking the best Razorback apparel possible. Well, there's no other place to do it than Alumni Hall in Fayetteville. If you go to the website, nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall, you'll be able to see the entire catalog that they have in store for you. Some of the highest and most Elegant brands for men, women, kids, all of that. Talking about Columbia, talking about Peter Millar, talking about Johnny O. They got in full stock. They got Rage Break baseball jerseys. They got baseball caps. And I bet you anything, they're going to have some cow gear because cow gear is what it's all about. Maybe the cow, the hogs, instead of call the hogs. We'll play on words there. But uh, they're always going to be forward thinking and having the newest and latest and greatest apparel when it comes to all things Rage Break. So check them out again at nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall. You can have it delivered straight to your door by browsing their entire catalog. They'll take care of you. They'll hook you up. And that is why we love doing business with Alumni Hall here in Fayetteville because of all the great apparel that they have, making it the ultimate Razorback shopping experience with Alumni Hall. Um, I know that Razorback Baseball will be having a game tonight against 7 o'clock. It's pretty wild to think. Uh, mainly just because it feels like it's later than what it is. It feels like it's it's you know a Tuesday game against a Texas Tech team that has had some success in their previous years. I remember in 2019, Arkansas lost to Texas Tech in their elimination game in the College World Series. That was a really frustrating year in postseason. I remember when Arkansas went to Omaha, they hosted a regional, they hosted the Supers, they beat Ole Miss, smoked Ole Miss in game three. They go to Omaha, and they face Florida State in game one. It was Mike Martin's final season as the head coach of Florida State, and they lose that game. I think it was like one to nothing. And then they lost to Texas Tech like four to three. It's just crazy how close that can be. But I remember that game against Texas Tech, and they've played Texas Tech before, and I think that they've had success. But it'll be fascinating to see how they bounce back. But also, knowing that there's a couple former players Texas Tech players on the Razorback roster. Now, they're not going to be going up against Mason Molina because he's not going to be pitching in these next two games. But, you know, the Hudson White angle, you know, is there extra energy from him? Is there extra juice from him? You know, what, what's his role going to be? What's it going to look like? Uh, time will tell. But Arkansas wants to try to bounce back. To, especially, they lost the number one spot. Again, not a big deal, but you don't want to be behind Texas A&M. I will say, though, that that series with Arkansas and A&M, I Golly, I wish that was in Fayetteville. But that series that's going to be down there in College Station, that's going to be a game changer, an absolute game changer. And it will be more than likely who's deciding to win the SEC, especially in the regular season. So uh, be be on the lookout for that. Uh, I can't wait. But still, we'll have some stuff, too, for uh, United States sports that we'll bring up for all of y'all and uh, for that series in particular on the road, too. So... 
Uh, but that's a perfect segue. Let's go ahead and get into your Arkansas update brought to you by Davis and Garrett Insurance, your independent auto owners insurance agency, securing what matters the most. Mentioned about Razorback baseball going up tonight against Texas Tech. As uh, uh, looks, Ben Bybee is going to be the starter for Arkansas. So looking forward to seeing how he, he, he jumps back out. But uh, we also talked about the commitment of Big Z. I'm going to keep calling him Big Z because I do not know how to pronounce. I do know, but I'm not going to try. The pronunciation is really, really difficult, which I got told this yesterday. And it's something I think I've always struggled with other than just talking in general is when you pronounce something, but you pronunciate, like it's it's pronounce, pronounce, pronunciate, pronunci- pronunciation, doesn't matter. Just something that like came to my attention. But still, uh, he was officially a commitment. And now you're starting to see also some of the players that have officially entered into the transfer portal for uh, Razorback football. We talked about Jacoby Criswell and how he's entered in. Not surprising. Uh, Isaiah Gustav is entered in. Not surprising. Which I also say that those are two position groups that are – fine like they have high quality depth uh, the quarterback position obviously you got to make sure Taylor green's healthy he's the guy but the running back position i know we said it last year but there's potential for arkansas's running back group to be better than what it was a season ago like i think with rashad dabinian jaquindon jackson those two guys especially they're going to be in, in, a, in a great place you throw in a guy like a Dominic Johnson, which you know he hadn't played that much past few years, but at least you know he's capable. You kind of know what you get with him. Uh, I think that there is some potential there too. So I, I don't know. I feel like the running back position could realistically be better than what it was simply um, a year ago, which not anything on the offense is not going to be a huge difference. But still, uh, I say all that also to this is not breaking news. But now it's at least been made official. This interesting situation with Andrew Chambly, who was the Razorback offensive lineman, in-state kid, four-star player, played a lot, started a lot last season. We know a few weeks ago, feels like weeks, it may have been months, but he, in the beginning of spring ball, just decided to retire from football and to focus on his academics. That's what he told Sam Pittman, and Sam Pittman relayed that message and said, hey, this is what he's wanting to do. He's wanting to move on with his career in academics and end it in football. And then he put out that weird post, Andrew Chambly, that is, on Twitter after that message was received where he posted his all-freshman, all-SEC award. He's like, you know, ain't done yet or something. And he was like, okay, what is this? What's happening? And then it was talked about he's in the transfer portal, and now he is officially in the transfer portal. And uh, he announced it uh, in, a, in a full-fledged post. Today he said, first and foremost, I want to thank God for blessing me in every way possible. Without him, I wouldn't be who or where I am today. I want to thank my parents for helping me through this journey. Every step of the way, y'all have been there, and I'm very thankful. I want to thank all the coaches and staff and University of Arkansas for helping me become a better person. I want to thank Coach Pittman for giving me a chance during this uh, chance of opportunity during my time on the Hill. With this being said, I'll be entering into the transfer portal with three years of eligibility. Okay. Again, I, I'm not trying to rehash too much of it, but it still is one of those things that I don't like. I don't like this. I don't like the fact that he said that he told Sam Pittman he lost his love for the game. And he told him that he wanted to leave, leave football. And, get that. and then this happens just weeks later. Kids are going to have their decisions get made one day and then change it the next. Like, it's just it's just a reality. I mean, I don't have kids, but I was a kid before, and I'm sure a lot of you know. This is kind of part of it. You know, you're never going to make up your mind in a lot of things, but this is something that, you know, in college, you're, you're going to be all over the place. But this is something that's even further than that. It's like, you went so above and beyond to leave the game and say, I'm done. I'm out. Appreciate it. See you. But then you immediately, essentially, immediately enter into the transfer portal. And I just have a problem with that. I, did you so Because you say you lost your love for the game. That's a very big statement. Well, obviously, you didn't leave your or lose your love for the game because you're still trying to play. It's just not supposed to be at Arkansas. I don't know. 
it's not it, I'm not trying to be preachy, but I'll remember when I think about it when my parents or my family and how big their like commitment was to be hey you and I'm not going to go all full old man be like when on my day I played at school for four or five four years and when I never transferred I was like I get transferring I do I'm in favor of transferring if a coach leaves or if you're trying to play and there's an opportunity over here for you to play immediately more so than at the spot like I, I'm all for that but to to quit the sport only to immediately come back to it, but just not at the place you were at. There's just so much fishiness behind that. It's so weird. Because it's one thing if you just lost the love to play for that particular team, but you lost the, just to play the game in general. So there's just weirdness to it. And I want to see what comes from it. And who knows, maybe he ends up being really good. Maybe he finds his way. Maybe he finds a good career and all that. But that's just the stuff that I really don't care for and that I don't like. If, if, if you're in the, ever in that position, do what you got to do. Do what's best for you because that's what we all were, were, were wanting and that's what we all would want, especially in our college age and everything. But I don't know. This, that part of it seems kind of lame. It's just me. That's fine. If it is just me, that's fine. But I'm never going to be a fan of that. And that is your Arkansas update brought to you by Davis and Garrett Insurance, your independent auto owners insurance agency securing what matters the most again bobby regan of barstool sports will be joining us here in about eh, we'll call it 20 minutes ish as uh we'll get his thoughts on things for not only uh, kentucky and cal and arkansas but it's amazing to see how many people are still trying to talk about uh, kentucky fans and arkansas fans are just arguing in the chat which it's it's always interesting to see but they're just uh arguing like you got people in the Stream, I guess Kentucky fans are saying, like, ah, BZ, Big Z sucks. It's not any good. Uh, he, he, he's not, he just, he struggles. He's with this. He says he's not going to be any, dude. like, all that. It's like, don't worry. It's going to be fine. He'll be fine. Uh, smelly it. Says, where's the barstool guy? He'll be coming on in 20 minutes. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, See, I just call it like, it's very, very much a lot of a lot of that action, like a lot of this Kentucky action coming in here and everything. Braden says tech batting 325 in their stadium is lightweight. Pop up goes over the fence. Completely different environment tonight. Yeah, and the wind's been brutal out there in northwest Arkansas. I don't know if it's gonna remain this way uh, for the game. I really hope it doesn't, but it has been extremely windy out there. And really uh, hoping that it doesn't get too bad for uh, the team and some of the issues that come from there. Hopefully that's not the case. James says, I think John needs to coach for two years, and let's see what he can do. John Calipari, not me. He offers a lot of perfect advice, so let's give him two years and see what he does. See, that's my thing. is like If you just give the coach what he needs to succeed, let's just see how it plays out. And I'll be, I'll be completely honest, and I'll be the first to admit it, if – Arkansas under Cal Perry ends up being a disaster, which I don't think it will be. But if it ends up being worst case scenario, I'll be like, hey, this wasn't it. This didn't work out. You got to move on. And this current state of transfer portal, NIL programs and everything, it's not like Cal Perry needs three years to build the program. He can win right now. So after year two, if Arkansas has missed back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments, yeah, we may start needing to have a little bit of a discussion because there's no reason for that. But let's see where it turns up. Let's see what this roster looks like first and foremost because that's where a lot of that comes into play as far as how good a team can be or how good they won't be. But if the current state of how things have been going are any indication, then I'd say, yes, it's going to be just fine. Uh, Bridge Nasty says, Allegedly, J.B. Hunt was maybe scrapping an, up an NIL deal for football after seeing that deal with basketball. Hey, I hope so. I hope this really brings everybody to the table. Nobody wanted to believe me. Nobody wanted to believe me when I said that Arkansas's NIL program was good, that they had money. Everybody needs more. No question about it. But it was good. It's been good. But with this stuff, you know, you got to elevate it. You got to keep it growing. You got to keep it getting bigger and bigger because – I'll never forget when the NIL program first started, 
my friends over there at Texags offered a deal to a to an athlete that was part of that recruiting class, and it was ten thousand dollars. And everyone was like, "Oh my gosh, absurd!" Now look at it, because that's just how much it's grown and how rapidly it's grown. You know, you could have twenty five million dollars for a football program, and two years ago, you have a national championship team. Two years from now, that may be barely scraping by. Just like everything, it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. It's it's just the way it's going to be. Racing Rock says, nice state sports bringing in all the fans these days. Hey, bring them all on. I don't care if you're the fans of anybody else. Uh, but, yeah, bring them, bring them on, on and just, again, appreciate them watching. I don't know why they're doing it, but appreciate them watching either way. Unbiased Brim says, uh, I'm not checking anything Muss is doing outside the surface level. No words or shade. Why don't y'all Kentucky fans do the same? Kind of with you. Like, I haven't even thought much about Muss, to be honest. And that's not an insult towards him. I just haven't. He's been so focused on Arkansas and the building that they have. I think, because again, it goes back to Kentucky fans are just worried. I get it. I'd be worried too. I'd be worried too. I think that there have been so many different coaches come and go in the college landscape and in college basketball that have worked out tremendously that were obvious ones. But then there are always risky ones that you talk yourself into. I mean, just think about you as a Razorback fan, because I've done the same thing, folks. I'm not saying I'm not the – I'm above it. But I've talked myself into coaches that got hired at Arkansas that ended up being disastrous. I'll admit the Chad Morris angle, I was not – I, I felt there was maybe potential there, but I never felt like, oh, man, rock star. No. But Brett Bielma, on the other hand, I felt that that was a rock star hire at the time because it was. The guy won three straight Big, Big Ten titles. But I, I tried to talk myself into that. I tried to talk myself into the John Pelfrey hire because of the, the nostalgia that he had. Because remember, he always referenced Corliss Williamson and Scotty Thurman and everything. And I remember that was some I that resonated with me and I kept up with and I'm like, okay, this might be okay. This might work, but everything else, it's just a wait and see approach. Cause that might be the ultimate question. Like which coach were you the most wrong about? And that could be wrong about cause you thought they sucked and they ended up being great or coaches that you thought were going to be great. That sucked. Which coach were you the most wrong about? And to me, I would say the coach I was most wrong about was Mike Anderson. Not that I expected Mike Anderson to win a national championship, but I expected that if he had gone to a Sweet 16 at UAB and had gone to an Elite Eight at Missouri, I would have felt very confident that he would replicate at least that at Arkansas and he never did in fact he never really sniffed the elite eight sweet 16 they got kind close once to one for a bad call against North Carolina but still there there need to be some other things I think Arkansas had a five-point lead in that game with five minutes left I was as close as they got but if you would have told me when Mike Anderson got hired back in 2012 2011 that he was going to be the coach for eight seasons and go to only three NCAA tournaments and win two games in that stretch, I would have been like, no way, no way. He's going to give it at least that. So that way have been one of the coach that I was the most wrong about. You know, I know nobody else wants to ever admit it, but yeah, I, that would be that's the coach that I was the most wrong about. And I think Cal, I'm hoping I'm not wrong about him. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. We'll keep it going here on the John Neighbor Show, folks. And uh, we'll have some other things to dive into, too. Some other Razorback news dealing with a question that got posed to me about the Razorback football team that also has to do with the Razorback basketball team. You won't want to miss it. So stay tuned here on the John Neighbor Show live from the State Sports Studios. We're not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we're not done. Hey, hey, John, uh, Bob Polt, Arkansas Democrat. Cricket. said I added two part of that. So, okay, you mentioned uh, Eric. Um, why do you always talk about Arkansas? But go ahead. Well, why do you always talk about Kentucky? <laughs> <laughs> UNC. 
missed it. You missed it. You missed it. I'm not going to go there with you. Why not? And that will be the last question I answer with that hat on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. That is why Arkansas is fantastic. Yes, sir. You know, and, and I like, you know, I didn't like the game, but I'm glad I was able to walk off the floor again and deep inside and have that funny feeling that, hey, one more time, Horn. Best guys, uh, I know it's a tough time for you. Uh, the coach is gone, but you've got a new coach now, and you got to listen to what he says. Okay, I know you're thinking, oh, who is this new guy? Where's the other guy that crashed the motorcycle? We like him better. He was cool or whatever. Forget about all that. Listen to the new coach and get out there and win some games. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. You guys act like it's... Pick it up a little bit, okay? Get your chin up. Smile. Smile. Okay? Hey, you guys, all right? If not, I'm not talking. Look at that, I'm so excited. Big red. Oh, oh. Guys, I've got just one thing I want to say to you. Touchdown, Arkansas! I was a teacher today. Told those boys, welcome to the SEC. Well, Fayetteville is 1,843 miles away, but the call of the Hawks can be heard all the way to San Francisco. Let's take my dick in the mashed potato. Go Hawks. Powered by Arkansas for Arkansas. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbors Show is live from the Natty State Sports Studios. Welcome back into the John Neighbors Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate everybody listening in and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. And thank you for making us a part of your afternoon this afternoon as uh, we've been talking a lot of Razorback basketball. And uh, we'll have Bobby Reagan of Barstool Sports. Don't worry. I'm, I'm sure you all will really appreciate what he has to say. I could not be more kidding about that he's going to say a lot of things that are probably going to be offensive to you Razorback fans but it should be a lot of fun either way uh always good catching up with him but that'll be happening here uh here in the next 10 minutes or so uh but I did want to bring up and I teased it a little bit before we took a break of this uh, something that can impact both Arkansas football and Arkansas basketball which is the NIL well it's not it's no secret there but one of the things that Curtis Wilkerson of United States Sports always kind of brought up is like how many, how much money NIL wise does it take in order to win a national championship in basketball? Like what's kind of the range to, to be able to put together a team, formulate a team to win a national championship in college basketball? And he's always brought up three to four million dollars, which is a good number and it's true. And then Arkansas has more than that now. So what does that tell you? But the point is, is that in football, it's a whole different thing. Because you have more players, obviously. You got more roster spots to fill. You have a lot more competitiveness. Because there may be places where NIL can go a lot further than other places. You know, you can, you can have $3 million, but that may only get you one really good player. And to me, if you're doing the numbers and looking at the type of talent that teams bring in, I feel like you have to have two to twenty to $25 million to have a competitive college football team, maybe even more. Now, you can get by with a little bit. You can make things work. But to me, it's not necessarily about the number as much. Now, numbers matter. But it's not about that. It's about the management of said number. Because, as I've said before, if you have all the money in the world, but you're not spending it the right way and in the right place, it doesn't matter. I mean, Texas A&M, great example. They have so much money, and they had a coach in Jimbo Fisher, and they spent that $25 million on that recruiting class that was number one in the country. And what did that give them? Nothing. So you, it's about having a coach 
that's competent enough, but also putting it in the right places. And I have felt at a place like Arkansas, especially in football, yes, freshman high school recruiting is nice. It's important. It's needed. But if you want to win and you want to win at the highest level and you want to win now, you got to get in the transfer portal. And I think that's where Arkansas can benefit the most of their NIL. There are players out there that developed or maybe got better that are now looking for opportunities that they didn't have before, that they weren't high-dollar players coming out of high school. You know, I think about like an Andrew Armstrong. I think he's going to be one of the best players on this offense this year. Shoot, you could take all the, the, the top three wide receivers, at least the top two, him and Tyrone Broden. Both of those guys transferred – from small schools, especially Armstrong from Texas A&M Commerce. And he had a lot of offers coming out of A&M Commerce, but he chose Arkansas and L Strong and everything. But those are guys that didn't really get the opportunities that maybe they wanted at their respective spots coming out of high school. And you got them to where now, I hate to even use the word desperation, but you got to the point now where they're like, hey, we got to figure out how to make this work. We got to figure out how we can put together a, a great group of a team and a coaching staff and everything that's going to help me get to that next level. And I only got two years to do it. So I got to make my decision. So it kind of puts a little bit of added pressure on it, where if you're like a five star player coming out of high school, and I like to use the Quinn Ewers example, like that guy was extremely gifted coming out of high school. And he had a great NIL deal, I think it was like a million dollars go to Ohio State, and the dude didn't even play, and he transferred out. I'm not saying every player is going to be like that, but there is a risk that you are running whenever you're going to have a player step up and look at the situation he's in and be like, you know what? I probably, probably need to do something differently here in my NIO and approach because I'm worth a lot of money, so I'm not going to go to just a place of – this, that, the other. I want to go to a place that's going to pay me the most. And if I don't like it, I'll just transfer out because I'll still have four years to play. Three or four years to play. It depends on if you redshirted or not. And that changes everything. Because then you're sitting there, if you're like Ohio State was in that situation, you invested a million dollars into one player that didn't play and that left. So, like, truly, what did that million dollars get you? This wasn't a return on investment. It's not like, oh, well... If I donate this amount, then I get all the benefits, all these perks, the you know, best seating in the stadium. You just wasted it. And a lot of these players may not even translate to the college level. Most of them will. Most of them will be really good or at least good enough. But there's so much uncertainty and so much unknown that you don't know how it's going to all play out. So that's the thing about football. I don't. I really do not want... NIL dollars spent at, at a high level on true freshmen. I understand you spending a bit to get them there. I understand, especially if they're like one of those freshmen that can help you out immediately. Or if it's somebody that you really want. But why would you want to risk all of that? Why would you want to risk all that to where if they come into you and they're not ready yet or they're not prepared for the SEC slate or whatever it may be, and you're like, hey, we got, we got this player that's better than you. We're going to play them. Okay. Season goes along, and they get a phone call from another school, from another big-time program in a different conference. They're like, hey, uh, we're short on this position, and you're really good. We noticed you didn't play. Come with us. We'll get you an IL. And we'll get you to play. And that player leaves. Suddenly, you're the one left holding the bag. That is what's the tragic part of NIL. And that's why in football, like basketball, a true freshman can make a difference. One-year player can make a difference. But in football, the NIL needs to be really focused on inside of the transfer portal. Getting those particular players to be in the portal, coming out of the portal, and be great for it too. So that was something that got brought up to me. I'm always, I always like talking about the NIL. It's a fascinating thing to me. I try to do my research on it. I try to talk to people who are in the know. And I try to get as much information as possible because there's a mystery to it. There's nothing transparent about the, the amounts or like how much a player is getting or how much a player is worth. 
So when there's uncertainty, and it's such a major, if not the biggest part of success in the college athletic landscape, it's interesting to me. It's fascinating. It's intriguing. And I really like the the, the message that it could send and, and the type of vibes that it could send. That's, again, it's just me. That's just how I feel about it. But still. Um, we're going to have Bobby Regan of Barstool Sports joining us here in just a second. I know you all are just thrilled to hear what he has to say. <laughs> I just can't wait. I can't wait because when I recorded the interview, I was like, oh, boy. Razorback fans are going to love this, but for all the worst reasons. But before we get to Bobby Regan, I want to tell you about the Autograph app here and being a part of Natty State Sports. Autograph app is a, an app that is co-founded by Tom Brady with one mission in mind, to change the fan experience for the better because the Autograph is, app is a fandom-rewarded app that allows devoted fans to unlock the most memorable experiences as well as their rewards. If you download the Autograph app and you can start getting rewarded for all the things that you already do as a fan, like reading the news and listening and watching college basketball coverage, stuff that we do here at United States Sports, you can read about it on the Autograph app. And whenever you do that, you unlock these different achievements you can have. For instance, Razorback Baseball is going to be taking on Florida here, not this weekend, but next weekend. Well, one of the deals that you could be able to unlock and win is the packages these cheap price packages for Arkansas and Florida in that baseball series where those tickets are going for an astronomical amount. Well, they'll have some really affordable packages for you. And all you got to do is download the app and use promo code Natty, N-A-T-T-Y, promo code Natty. It's a simple thing to do. When you download it, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to get all the great content that you're going to consume anyway, so might as well get rewarded with it, right? Right. Just download the Autograph app on the Apple Store, the App Store, or on the Android Store, Android Store, wherever you can find your apps. Download the Autograph app using promo code Natty. All right. Well, you know this is the moment you've been waiting for. Bobby Regan of Barstool Sports. Kentucky alum. Guy that's, I don't know. I like the guy, but we'll just go ahead and play it for you right here. Take it away. All right, Razorback fans, I know that everyone is really high on the Razorback basketball team right now, feeling pretty good, especially as this week will be a big one for new head coach John Calipari and adding to some of the spots that he has on the roster because he has plenty of them but it was also just a big week for college basketball in general and it's been a while it's different circumstances this time but so let's go ahead and welcome in our very special guest and friend of the show it is bobby regan of barstool sports and as always bobby we appreciate you joining us how you doing this afternoon man I, i'm good man i you know what i couldn't be better Wow. Wow. So you're, you're feeling pretty good though, right now. I, I, I want to, I want to get your thoughts on it first. Cause we haven't talked to you at least on this show about it. We'll start with the Arkansas angle. Then we'll go to the Kentucky angle, but Cal Perry head coach of Arkansas. Just how does that make you feel officially as a UK guy? Like I, I keep saying it, the divorce had to happen, right? Like, like I was ready to divorce John Calipari and vice versa. I was sick of doing the, we'll stay together for the kids. You get through the holidays and then you realize you can't stand each other again. What I hate is that he's married to the neighbor. I hate, and I got to see him all the time. Like just move out West, go start a new life. Do your, like go sell, you know, door to door cosmetics or whatever people do out West go out there. It's the fact that he's in conference not even in conference because uh, conferences are stupid these days, but it's, he's with a team, a program that was a rival, you know, in the nineties, probably the, the most heated rival in the sec, I think is fair to say, obviously fallen off some, you know, I think Tennessee kind of has taken Arkansas spot for, for most of Kentucky basketball fans, but it's still a, a, a team, a program that we know all too well. Like, it's just, why, why did you move in down the street? Like, get away from me. So it feels weird. Like it, he doesn't look right either. Like he's wearing red and it's just like, I know he wore red at UMass, but it's like, he's been in blue for so long, whether it was Kentucky or, or Memphis. First off, red sucks as a color. It's the worst <laughs> color out there, but it's also like, it just looks weird. John Calipari, Arkansas, it doesn't even sound right, right? Like he's the East Coast version, so, so UMass. Then you had kind of the bad boy, John Calipari versus NCAA. Memphis seemed to fit in perfect for that role. Then you had him as, you know, the face of college basketball at the Blue Blood program at Kentucky. 
now it's just like I hate Arkansas. It's I don't even think Arkansas fans think it sounds right. No. In fact, I still still think they're trying to grasp the reality of this because it just didn't seem like there was any chance of it. And I know, uh, you know, we talk about coaches that have gone on and, and accomplished great things at schools. It seems like they stayed there until they retired. You know, the Coach K's, the Roy Williams, you know, Bill Self. I don't see him going anywhere. But I think that was more of the shocking thing is not only him leaving Kentucky to still coach, which it wasn't unlikely, but the destination being Arkansas, as uh, people have been referring to the chicken man, John Tyson, the relationship goes a long way. And I guess the timing of it all and uh, the way that it all played out, it's almost like Eric Musselman's completely forgotten already in Arkansas. And fans are at least excited just because of not only the possibility and potential, but also the attention that's being paid to Arkansas right now because of the Cal effect. These are the same Arkansas fans that have been yelling at me and Kentucky fans, making fun of us for the rosters and March failures over the last five years. Guess what, buddy? About. Get ready to learn Calipari ball because, listen, he's 64 years old. You know what old people do? They don't change. They don't. They are who they are. Like, John Calipari is who he is. He's 64. He's the most stubborn man in America. What? Like, look at the fact that he's bringing his entire staff, which that was a big topic of conversation within Kentucky, that if he stayed, you had to overhaul the staff. He couldn't just have his his guy standing there. He's the only thing he's doing is bringing his son in. Brad's coming in. That's the one change he's making. And then you're basically just getting a roster. You're, 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 you're becoming Kentucky at Arkansas for a year. Y'all were ready to talk about how we were going to be overhyped and, and how we wouldn't win the sec and how we wouldn't make a run in March. And when we came in at like, I can't wait. I can't wait to see these morons that do rankings and the AP doing Arkansas in the top 10. And if it was at Kentucky, everyone would be like, no, they're like 19. But uh, it, it, it's the same team. It's the same thing we've seen at Kentucky. It's just, listen, nobody's better at a mic than than Calipari, like the Duke can, the Duke can sell, he can speak, but as we learn at Kentucky, you gotta win. And Musselman won. Like it's crazy how quick Arkansas fans turned on Musselman. Yeah, he had a losing season this year. He had a more successful March run the last five years in Calipari. So this is everything you made fun of is what you're now being hand delivered. Well, and I think uh, Razorback fans are going to say, ah, we never said those things. That, that was never the thought process. Oh, there's a, there's a good thing you can find stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's a some, good thing. Yes, there's some evidence of it uh, around there too. But uh, I, I guess it's like, if, for, honestly, because I, I agree with what you're saying, and, and I'm not disagreeing. It's more of just the 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 power and the impact and the the, the name and the, the recognition that comes along with it and the possibility. It's the potential. And people love Muss, and and they I still think there's a lot of people that do love Muss, but it's just now it just feels like it's a rejuvenation and an energy. So I'll ask you honestly, like what's best case scenario for Arkansas and Cal Perry? He's got a five year deal, you know who knows what the next few years will even hold. But what do you feel like is the the ceiling, that the potential that Cal could be and do at Arkansas as the head coach? So it's like what I always said with Cal Perry at Kentucky: the goal is to be in the national title contender list. Every year, especially at Kentucky, you got to be at it basically every year. You got to be on the short list of teams that realistically have a shot to win the national title because you want as many bullets as possible when it comes to the greatest, dumbest event in the world in the NCAA tournament. If he makes a Final Four, it feels like a win at Arkansas, right? Like y'all haven't made a Final Four in in decades, so you're not a blue blood. No matter what Calipari says, you're not. Like you're not you're probably the third most successful in the SEC, Kentucky and Florida ahead of you. Yeah, that's fair. So you're not a blue blood. Like Florida's not sniffing blue blood status. Arkansas is not a blue blood. You have money. You have the chicken man. You have a good home arena. But, like, you're not a blue blood. Don't let Calipari fool you. That was the dumbest single – the single dumbest thing he said was that Arkansas is a blue blood like everyone else. No, you know, no, no, you're not. You're 
you're like every other program with one title. That's also what the last time y'all made a final four. No, second to uh, last because we made in 95. We lost the title. 95, now. right? 95. <laughs> so 30 years, a lot of people, a lot of people yelling at me. Don't even know what a final four is like. So, you know, luckily I can tell you from experience that it's fun. It's a good time. That's got to be, if, if he makes one, it, it's got to be a success. Because what else? Like, Arkansas doesn't have that history. Yeah, I think so. So if you're, on the nat- if, if you're on the short list of national title contenders, let's say two out of five years, realistically, not just, well, wait for my team to get the march, and then the same bullshit that we see all the time with Calipari. If you're a true national title contender and – make a final four, it's got to feel like a success. Yeah. And I think most Razorback fans would sign up for that right now. And I think a lot of, of it course, has it's the more, more successful than you've been in 30 years. Exactly. Exactly. And I, and I think that that's kind of where, you know, as the progress goes and how tough it is to win in the NCAA tournament. I mean, I think people would sign up for that, but I also think that Razorback fans and where the whole blue blooded comment comes, I don't think that anyone's under the false reality that, Arkansas and Kentucky are on the same level. Like even oh, John Calipari like, they're is. not, but I think that people understand that there is the potential here at a place like Arkansas to be that. If you have the right coach in place, they haven't had the right coaches in, in a long time, but I mean, they, they got a lot going for them. And I feel like, I, I just feel like Cal would not have just chosen any job. At least he wanted to go to a well, job, he took that like job with succeed. the money and the, and the friends. Listen, John Calipari one thing he do, does is surrounds himself with people that he knows, trusts, likes. That's what he has with this group at Arkansas. It's a good thing and a bad thing. It caused a big divide, especially later on in Kentucky, between Kentucky boosters and Calipari boosters. It caused a big divide between fans, whether it was University of Kentucky fans, John Calipari fans. I just... Again, we're not talking about John Calipari of 10 years ago. We're not talking about John Calipari of five years ago. In his mind, he is still the guy that is going to go undefeated like in 2015, but win a title. That is what John Calipari believes he's going to do. That game broke his brain. The Wisconsin 2015 Final Four game broke his brain. The Luke May shot basically ended his brain, and then 2019 collapse against Auburn in the lead eight fully shut down his brain. So you got to find a way for John Calipari at 64 years old who thinks his way is the only way to win to now revert back to early 2010s. What, what, what makes Arkansas fans think that's possible? Well, I think the amount of talent that they're hoping to bring in. And, and we've seen that. Yeah. That's been story every year for 15 years though Mm -hmm. yeah i just think that kentucky fans made him miserable man and they're they're horrible people and just you know he wasn't comfortable oh yeah and arkansas fans are not delusional and very calm and they i mean they love the man they've always loved for now you know this for now you know this but how quick did they turn on Mus? i mean they they turned on Mus when Mus wanted out like that's 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 when people start because it it was it was pretty apparent in there early going that Mus was wanting out of here and And how quick it Will quick. it take for John Calipari to piss someone off when you guys lose to, you know, just remember, this is the same guy who has lost to Evansville, St. Peter's, Oakland, Vanderbilt in the SEC tournament, um, and not even a good Vanderbilt team. Um, is it UNC Asheville. What happens when these Arkansas fans are packing Bud Walton Yo, no one comes into Bud Walton and beats us. And then Little Rock comes in and beats you. Well, well, they always play the Little Rock game down there in Little Rock. Indiana. All right, what about Arkansas <laughs> yes. State? Yes, well, hold on a second, hold on a second. But then, okay, enough of the Arkansas slander, Bobby, because I'm going <laughs> to go after you and say there's no way that you as a Kentucky fan with a straight face can feel so much better about Mark Pope being the guy. And I'm like, oh, now everything's going to be great. Like, we're, everything's going to go forward. Kentucky's going to set themselves off to a, we got to a, better a new coach. level because they hired a coach who hadn't even won an NCAA tournament game before. We got a better coach. The five years he was at BYU, three of them he finished higher than, than Calipari. 
And what? Three over two. That's that's a better coach than Calipari in a five year span. Okay, well, I mean, you, he doesn't want an NCAA tournament game, and you know, you were complaining so it's about one Cal- versus zero. Calipari's one one. I'm I'm just saying. I will. He was Mark Pope my number one choice. No, was Mark Pope my number one choice after the dreams of Hurley, Oates, and Drew went? No, he was on that second list. To me, like I still. I was mad about the hire when it first happened because of the way Mitch Barnhart went about it. He, Mitch Barnhart is an athletic director who's been around since 02 with Kentucky. It's just far too long. Like, I, I don't think he's a great AD. He screwed up a lot of things, whether with alcohol sales at, at games, the Billy Gillespie hire. Cal Perry was his third choice in 09. Like, it took Donovan and Izzo, I believe, to say no to get to Cal Perry. So again, it's not like Cal Perry, you know, the moment they fired Billy Gillespie, the, the plane was in Memphis to pick up Cal Perry. There was still some stuff going on with Mitch Barnhart. He does not like guys with quote baggage. So he, that ruled out guys like Sean Miller, who was very high on my list that ruled out guys like Will Wade that ruled out guys like Chris Beard that group that I think a lot of Kentucky fans thought we'd end up with of, all right, if Drew says no, you, you know, yeah, I, I always thought it was impossible to get Hurley. Obviously you, you throw him the ridiculous money amount and say, take it or leave it. All right, we're going to Drew then. I'm a little stunned Drew said no. Like I, I was battling people who think Drew's a bad coach. Drew's a hell of a coach. Now, is there questions about whether he'd be able to handle the entirety of the Kentucky job, right? Like you have to be the one thing Calipari was great at is he understood what came with the Kentucky job. Like it's, it's the entire thing in the state and Kentucky is a weird state, right? There's, there's nothing else. It's that horse racing and bourbon and you know, there's no pro team. It's a year round thing. You know, you don't get a break like Arkansas. You get a break when football rolls around Arkansas care. Like not saying Kentucky doesn't care about football, but it's, the gap between Kentucky yeah. basketball and Kentucky football fandom is is still monumental. No matter how like you know, no matter how great Mark Stoops does, it's still monumental. There was concerns about whether Drew would be able to handle that, right? Like he's he's protected at Waco. It's it's Baylor. No one. It's it's Waco. But so Barnhart just goes out and gets Pope, who he deems is his guy. I will say this, like. Pope, it, the, the schematic portion of it was never going to be a concern. Like, Pope, what, what he does on offense is some of the most gorgeous offensive schemes in the country. And that's a huge step up for what Kentucky fans want to see based on what we saw out of Kentucky in the last few years. The concern is always, yeah, the zero NCAA tournament wins. And how will he adapt from having to recruit at one of the toughest places to recruit in BYU, right? Like, no... No non LDS Mormon wants to go to BYU. Like we know the handbook rules. Guess what college kids like to do? They like to drink. They like to have sex and they like to party. You can't do any of those things at BYU. You just can't, you get married. So there was, you know, at BYU, it's, it's almost impossible to recruit non LDS, non Mormon into the basketball program while yes you do have the built-in pipeline of of those guys to go to BYU so I think in the next month we'll see what Pope's able to do in terms of the transfer portal at Kentucky because recruiting it's you know I'll wait till next year for recruiting you know the class of what that means class of 25 because this year is just so built you know you're you're coming in late after Recruits are committed, and, and now you're basically just following coaches from, you know, if, if you, you know, obviously all the guys following Cal Perry, Pope's already got Chandler following him. So it's just, that's just the nature of recruiting. But if he can go into the transfer portal, find guys that fit his scheme and they, they look the part, why wouldn't Pope be able to recruit at Kentucky? Like even Billy Gillespie was able to recruit at Kentucky. Billy Gillespie brought in Patrick Patterson. So it's like that fear kind of went away a little quicker 
when I remembered one, it's BYU, and two, he got a four million dollar NIL donation the first day for Kentucky. Like it's still, it's still the bluest of blue bloods. It's still the team that's going to be on TV every single game. SEC Network will go to Kentucky games even without Calipari. Kentucky will draw the most eyeballs every single game because that's just history tells us that's going to be the case. Doesn't matter who the coach is at Kentucky. People watch Kentucky. I I think it's fine. Like I I don't. And the other thing is if and and I had this talk with somebody too of, all right now that Drew said no, where do you turn? And it was like a name like Todd Golden was floated to me, and I said you know what I actually would be fine with that. Of you know Golden's like my age, he's thirty eight. If you think he's the guy. Why would you, and I saw people be like, well, you go get Patino for a couple of years and then go get Golden. And it's like, why? Why why draw out the, the two to four year span where who knows what's going to happen in their career? If you think that's the guy, just go get him now. That's kind of how I feel about Pope. He's young in his coaching career. He's only 51 years old. If you thought he was going to, everyone kind of thought he would take the Kentucky job at some point in his career. What's it matter if it's now or five years from now? Well, let me ask you this with a straight face. You believe that the next three years that Kentucky basketball will be better than Arkansas basketball with their respective coaches. Do you believe that? I think over they both have five-year deals. I think over the five years, Kentucky will have more success in Arkansas. Okay. And when you say success, are we talking about just the tournament or we just talk about everything? No, I think you have to look at everything, right? Like, obviously, the tournament success means the most. If one team has a title and the other doesn't, like, that obviously matters. But if you're talking about consistently winning and you start looking at, and I even hate doing, like, conference regular season titles because the unbalanced schedule just so stupid now. Like, I, I don't I don't really care about celebrating a, a conference regular season title as much. It, 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 like it, the big East, it matters when you play a true right. round Robin, you know, home and home and a home. But if you start looking at, okay, Kentucky's positioned themselves to be on that short list of national title contender, they're getting better seeds. And it's, I, I think over the five year span, I'll, I'll trust Kentucky basketball over John Calipari. Well, I think we're going to have to put a bet on this of some sort, because I believe that John Calipari and Arkansas is going to have more success than what Kentucky will. And I'll tell you, he'll have a better job of uh, bringing in five stars. Sure. But that doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> I, I Here's what I, this is my dream scenario for all you Kentucky fans. I hope Cal comes in and wins a national championship in his first year at Arkansas. And just to see the, the reaction from Kentucky. I would legit fans, be stunned. I would be too, to be honest. <laughs> like, because be like, there's no, nothing tells you that that should happen. No, there is nothing. But at the same time, I mean, who's to say that, Pope can come into Kentucky with a guy who's never won an NCAA tournament game. I just think it's a really interesting, like, because you got the better job of Kentucky with the less, re- at least resume type coach, but you have a lesser job than what Kentucky is with Arkansas, but then you got a more established resume. So, right. I mean, this could be a really interesting dynamic. But I mean, history tells you that Mark Pope will succeed at Kentucky because every coach that has been sober has won a national championship at Kentucky. Okay, I mean, can you? All right, you're going to give Tubby Smith the credit for that one. Come on now. He still won it. Yeah. I mean, it's still he still won it. And Tubby, like Tubby, Tubby, Tubby's career was weird because it ended. Obviously, the last two years were were down by Kentucky standards. But I mean, in the the third to last year, he was a heartbreaking triple overtime, double overtime, elite eight loss from another Final Four where I think it kind of skews how people view Tubby Smith's like he was really good at winning games. Like he won a lot at Kentucky. I think that kind of gets lost because of the title and that happened in 98 and then nothing else. But again, it's just like, he still gets a title to his name and that matters. And now Pope obviously is going to be a little different than Tubby because he's not inheriting a roster like Tubby did, but it's, the history tells me Mark Pope should be fine. Well, I'm just glad I get to hate you again. And uh, I, know. I hate Kentucky once again, because, you know, you talk about the rivalry and it was big in the nineties, as we all know. And I want to say there was a stretch from like, man, it's like 2001 to 2000. And 
11 or something like that where Arkansas had not beaten Kentucky. It was like a 10 year stretch, but yeah, it was just kind of like they were there. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, so it's just, it's a feeling to where there's going to be a lot of energy and the sec, if they do not make this a home and home this year in the conference scheduling, I, I don't know what we're doing. Like if it's, or the dumbest thing they could do is only make that game at Arkansas. The, yes. Now I like you've got to bring Calipari back to Rupp Arena. hundred percent. 100% got to agree with that. but And they got to put it on the right. They got to put it on the right day. Hey, it can't get Saturday. buried by football. And I think it's if you do a home and home, you got to go to Rupp first, right? You can't do the first game at, at Arkansas. Yeah, I, I mean, I would think so. I would think so. And it again, I think both. It needs to just go back to the old school thing of, I know they've done it before, but we'll see. But have it both games on Saturdays. Both games need to be on CBS. You know, have, have, have the big... The big pomp and circumstance leading up to Got to do what what they did with Ed Cooley in Georgetown yeah. or Ed Cooley in Providence. Yeah, they brought him back on a Saturday to Providence. That place was bananas. You need that. It needs to be a Saturday, like late afternoon, early night game. I don't want it to be like I don't want it to be the eight thirty nine o'clock game. I want it to be somewhere in the three to six thirty range. I think that's the perfect amount of pregame partying the hostile environment and it th- won't get buried you know because then you have the night to talk about it it won't get buried immediately everyone talking about nfl the next day right well are you going to go to it when it's at rub on a saturday are you are, how, how could you pull that off if i yeah that's people keep asking that it's like listen I'm a, i don't live in lexington yeah person, right so i got to make my way back to lexington and I'm a father of two young kids, which let me tell you something. <laughs> the only thing that's a bigger terrorist than John Gallipari on a mic is two kids. So navigating that's going to be in itself. And yeah, different what day it is. I mean, I would love to go back. I, I would like to try to go back. I'm sure ticket prices are going to be astronomical one way or the other. So, but it's going to be, you know, I was there. I'm trying to think like when the games I was there for that could hold a candle to Calipari coming back. It's like, I was there when they finished the the undefeated regular season against Florida in in 15, that kind of had a a different aura in the arena. Um, The, some of the Indiana and Louisville and Florida games in the, in the mid to late two thousands, you know, that always brought a juice, you know, Matt Walsh and all that, you know, when I was there, I don't know if this will hold a candle. I wasn't there when Patino, his first game back, but like Patino also went to the Celtics. It wasn't direct to the other. Now it was Louisville and no matter what, we hate Louisville way more than Arkansas, but Patino might be there. Patino might have, St. John's might have a game and Patino still might show up just to boo Calipari. Like I love that we got Patino back. This was a great trade. Like we traded Calipari for the 96 team, basically. And Patino willing to cut his own check. What is it? I'll say this. This is my Kentucky fan coming out. What other program would have a current division one coach who's battling recruits with you cut an NIL check to your program if needed? Because there's one and it's us. Yeah, well. I mean, hey, listen, it, the 96 team, the 94 team for Arkansas, you know, it's a long time ago. So, but hey, nostalgia can go a long way. And I just, again, I'm glad that it's going to be that heat in that building. And same thing in Bud Walton. Just, it's, it's going to be the must-watch game of the SEC, no matter what else with is these, going on. With these. Yeah, and so it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, I uh, hope, I'll, I'll, now that I think about it, I hope they start the SEC season with Arkansas oh, and Kentucky. Yeah. That that would be epic. That that would because be- who knows? Like both teams could you know, both teams could be like six seeds or something like that, and and the juice you know while well, it'd be there, but on a national level, whatever. I hope if they're smart, they got to center it around football, obviously. But if they could kick the SEC season off with Calipari coming back, that's that's the ideal scenario. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see, but either way, Bobby, Hey, it's good to get to hate you again. It's good to be able to talk noise about it again. And I can't wait for the basketball season to start. I might have to come to Arkansas. So many people threaten me. If I came, I might just have to come anyways. Do that. Do that. We'll we'll get you some Tyson chicken, man. We'll get you all set up. (laughs) 
We got we're money. not a Tyson chicken family. They're banned. <laughs> yeah, we got we got all. I mean, up. I thank them for taking thirty three million off my hands, but they're an enemy. Like it's everyone keeps saying that. Like, oh, how can you hate Calipari? It's like, listen, I will always thank him for the run that he had. But he's an enemy now. It's very easy to hate an enemy. It's if you're trying to beat Kentucky, I said it, I would boo my own mother if she was trying to beat Kentucky. And I think 99% of Kentucky, I think 99% of moms would do the same thing. Yeah. Well, what's great is that we have both Cal Perry and Bobby Petrino. So man, we 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 got them all over here that you guys want to hate. I mean, you guys might have the most hateable, like football slash basketball combined coaching staff in the country. Yeah. And we're fine with it. Cause yeah, I don't think it like, I'm trying to think, I don't even think it's that close. Like no one hates Kalen DeBoer where it's like Oates and Oates and DeBoer. I, I don't, I can't think of anyone else. No, no, no one hates Lamont Paris. So you can't, you know, Shane Beamer, Lamont Paris. I think hates maybe a strong word, but I don't know, man, the whole Lane Kiffin, Chris Beard thing might give a run for its money. Ooh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Like, Kiffin's kind of done a redemption tour, though. Yeah, yeah. No, he's more like Petrino for sure has it. No, no. But that's, again, Razorback fans, I think we're fine with it. But either way, it's going to be exciting, man. But, hey, appreciate you as always, Bobby. Good to catch up with you, man. It's going to be fun to see what this offseason has in store for both Arkansas and Kentucky. But enjoy the uh, basketball landscape, man. And uh, we always appreciate you joining us. I will. Thanks, man. All right. That was Bobby Regan of Parcel Sports. <laughs> sure went exactly how you uh, thought it would. But... Uh, it's, it's good catching up with him and get, it's good to hate Kentucky again. Cause I hate, I always kind of hated Kentucky, but then they became less of a threat. Now I really hate them. So it's going to be great. I, these comments, man, y'all are killing it. Uh, but yeah, that does it for us here on the John neighbor show. Really appreciate each and every one of you listening in and watching into the John neighbor show. Be sure to subscribe to it. Subscribe to United States sports. We got some great things going on here. So we continue to grow and continue to do some great things with Arkansas sports. And we're going to keep it going from there. Same podcast and same show time, channel, everything tomorrow afternoon. Have a great rest of your day, folks. Get ready for Razorback Baseball, and we'll see you then tomorrow right here at Natty State Sports.